It has already been two months since I first started to use GNOME and I wanted to do a new video saying what I liked and what I disliked after, after two months. I already did one video after like a week and I got a lot of useful feedback and I received like 50 messages saying you need to install this extension that I now do have and that was indeed correct that improved the situation by a lot. So first of all, what do I actually like about GNOME? And a lot actually, it fits, as I said in the last video, my idea of how I should use a desktop. It just works, it has touchpad gestures, it has touch screen gestures, and a lot of, well, everything I need from a shell is built in, now that, I mean, built in, considering um, extensions, now that I do have them, and uh, you, I can switch between all of the audio inputs. The, there are a couple of things that bugs me, and the first one is actually a bug, and it's not a bug in GNOME, but rather in an extension, which is the Blur My Shell extension, which is super beautiful, super beautiful, I want to emphasize this. However, a lot of times, they, this title bar here, this status bar, whatever you call it, is very often doesn't get actually blurred until I go inside of the overview and then go back, come back. This is probably a known bug, but nonetheless, it's the only bug that really annoyed me. So if that's the issue, then you know the situation is pretty good. Another thing that but this is due to the design of actually GNOME annoyed me, is connecting to Wi-Fi. Now, let's say that I just turned off the Wi-Fi um, router and then I see it's not connected, I select network and then it automatic automatically connects to the network and the connect button is still off and I need to go to cancel. All of this interaction feels weird overall. Uh, it's much better in my opinion in Plasma where you have the volume applet and you don't actually have to go inside of a dialogue that closes everything else, dims the whole, whole screen and uh, you need to click cancel after actually the computer automatically connects to the internet. And generally speaking, interacting with connecting to the Wi-Fi is a bit weird. Connecting to the Bluetooth through because in order to connect to a new device, I need to go into Bluetooth settings, which is weird. I mean, select network, okay, intuitive. Bluetooth settings, why don't you have connect to Bluetooth? And in here, even now it's turned off, but if I wanted to connect to this, there is this connection button, which I want to emphasize this, shouldn't, in my opinion, of course, be this component. It should be a button because what this does is try to connect and it immediately disappears, which is not how uh, this component should behave. It's uh, supposed to stay on. And uh, usually if it's not like in range, it comes back and it's still off. This is the weird weirdest thing ever. I think it would be much better to have just a button that says connect and you click on it and then it says trying to connect. And then if it fails, it says, I don't know, fade, uh, connect again, I don't know but not this in my opinion. These are the only two things that I got annoyed by GNOME. Everything else is good from the shell. And uh, I mean, I really want to emphasize this before, before switching to the next seg section. The shell is really good. Like mm, I really like the design and after I've been made aware of some useful tricks, like you can actually drag this window <laughs> inside uh, the desktops to create a new one. That was pretty useful. I didn't know I didn't know about it. Now that I do, it's pretty useful. And uh, in general, actually managing workspaces with an extension is perfect. I really like the shell. What I don't like personally, again, is the default apps. So I was used to Dolphin and Kate for the two most common apps I use, of course, viewing files and doing code. Dolphin, I think, in my opinion, beats um, Nautilus, it's called, right? Nautilus, I think it's called. It's uh, It has a bit more feature. Like, uh, as an example, let's say that I'm inside of documents and now I want to do a new text file and then I right click and there's nothing. Why don't I have a new file? And then I go see here, like, where is it? Uh, there's uh, 
three different new icons, but this one is surely not a file. <laughs> this one is a window, this one is a folder. So as far as I know, unless my setup is broken, there is no way to create a new file from inside the file manager, which I can understand as a design decision. I personally just don't think it fits me. So I would prefer to actually be able to create new files from a context menu. And this is just an example. In general, Dolphin is more flex flexible. Uh, if you want another example, yeah, it's cool to have tabs, but it's also very cool to have split view and split view is just a very, very nice feature of Dolphin. So I think that Dolphin kind of beats but it's not like it was very troublesome for me. I can just use this. It's no big deal. I'm just slightly annoyed by some decisions. Uh, and then there's this. So this is JEdit, as far as I know, of course. Uh, it's actually JEdit in the name as well. well this one is called uh, Just Documents. So JEdit, I tried to use it to do some light uh, editing for my code. I have some very small files, like, I don't know, let's take Sketches Editor as an example. This is uh, not too big, like, this isn't too big uh, for my code standards. 300 of lines of an HTML page. And I, I just can't use JEdit, like uh, I don't really like. So I don't understand why the default is eight instead of four. Who uses eight by default? This is so weird to me. Like even for a normal like light uh, text editing, like if four feels normal, eight doesn't. <laughs> I, I don't understand it four here, like this. And it's tab by default, which I understand, but all of my files are using spaces. And if I switch to spaces, it's not actually remembered throughout the session. So I have to do this every time I open JEdit, which is a bit annoying. And in general, I, I never realized just how fully fledged Kate is. Like Kate has a lot of stuff. I'll make you a simple example. Okay, not so simple example, but uh, I'm very annoyed by this. The JEdit by default out of the box doesn't have zoom. Like I, I, I don't just don't understand this. Like is zooming your text not a common use case? I thought everybody did it. I, I don't understand. Why do I have to install a plugin to, to actually zoom in? Is the plugin plugin installed by default every, everywhere else except on my computer. I, I don't understand it. So I installed the plugin to actually zoom in. Weird. And uh, what else? So Kate has a lot of features that are extremely nice when you're doing editing. As an, an example, let's say that this line should actually be underneath top. So how I would do it here is take this, cut here, paste. Okay. In Kate, you can actually do control shift up or control shift down and it moves moves lines. And if you select a block, you can do that and it moves the entire block. Super useful. I wish that every text editor had that. I cannot blame JEdit for not having this, but I just felt like really felt the lack of this thing. Another thing which is even more niche in Kate, you can go control shift B and it goes inside block editing mode where you can edit like five lines at the same time, which is super cool and super helpful. And it often happens to me that I'm doing stuff in JEdit and then I realize I have to edit like 10 lines at the same time and I just close JEdit, open up Kate, enter a uh, block mode, do the stuff there and then close Kate, go back to JEdit because it's actually quicker to open up Kate Again, it's not something I can blame JEdit for not having, but it's something that I do praise Kate for having out of the box, even though it's a very simple, to be honest, uh, text editor, like really out of the box. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. In general, I didn't feel I could, I could actually do uh, text editing through JEdit, which is a bit sad. It's the only GNOME app that really I couldn't 
I couldn't use for its intended use case. And for its intended use case, I do mean it because it's not like I do J edit to do super complex stuff. I don't. I do simple scripts. If I have to do editing, I can use an IDE, but for simple scripts, this should work. And uh, I feel like Kit just is whole another level. So apps wise, these two didn't convince me. And sadly, these are the most common apps that you use. Another one, let me quickly uh, talk about uh, this one, which I use to take notes in class. And this is funny. Okay, let me say a couple of things as a necessary premise. Okay, let's go. You can see my uh, Calculus 3 notes. So this, as far as I know, is a third party app. So it's not like, again, I'm blaming any GNOME developer about this, not at all. And also I, I've used it for months at this point and it's a good app. And I think it's one of the most simplest apps out there. And I just loved this create new template, which is super easy. And I wish Kile, which is the LaTeX editor from KDE at this. However, however, Sometimes I just don't understand. Just like the text uh, zoom inside of here, there are some things that I just don't understand here. Now in here I can zoom in, probably because I installed the plugin in JEdit. I guess this is the same uh, text component. And one thing that is incredibly annoying is let's go to a new line as an example down here. And when I do, Sorry, when I do open bracket, it automatically adds a closed bracket. Okay, makes sense. Now, personally, I never like this kind of feature. I always turn them off, but I can live with them, of course. And uh, this also works if I do this bracket and if I do, of course, the square bracket, sorry, which is this one. Now, why do I turn these things off? Because my muscle memory is always close, uh, open and close. And the more advanced editors correctly guess that if I'm putting a close bracket and there's a close bracket just after that, then I probably just want to skip after it. This one doesn't, so I often end up with this, but in general, mathematics doesn't close its own brackets a lot of times. Like I'll make you an example. If I have to do the open set between the numbers zero and three, I can write it like this, but most times in calculus, the notation is zero, uh, close bracket, zero, three, open bracket without the close one, which is super weird. I personally hate it, but that's just what the notation is. And every time there's this, I have to, you know, remove the extra open because I, I didn't actually need it. And this is slightly annoying. And also, yes, this is going to be a rant about closing brackets. So you can feel free to skip ahead if you're bored. And also the square bracket one is incredibly unreliable. Like sometimes if I do like this, it works. And let me try to um, reproduce uh, here. It works uh, here. It works. Okay. I don't know. But in some cases, which I don't remember right now, it doesn't actually auto close. So I need when I'm type, typing to actually guess if it's going to auto close or not. And I don't think it's that it doesn't work. I just think that in some cases, something which again, I don't remember now, just inhibits the, the ability to actually close it. Maybe it's supposed to be open in some specific scenarios. I don't know, but sometimes it doesn't close and uh, also the, the round one. And sometimes I just have to guess and I as well, I lost hours <laughs> of lectures. Like I, I was writing notes and then I had to stop for like five minutes to check again, all of my brackets, which are a lot because it's complex mathematics and I've got a lot of brackets. I need to stop and go through all of them to see where I forgot to close one. Not like I forgot, but where the computer decided to just open up. So you could say, why don't you d just disable uh, auto close brackets? Because there's no such option. And that's what bothers me. Like you should have an option to remove this feature. Like I don't want this feature. I don't want my brackets to be automatically closed. I can do it by myself. 
any text editor that I've ever used before this, add an option to remove that function functionalities if I didn't want it. I, why? Just, I don't understand it because this was just a beautiful LaTeX application until I realized how much this auto close bracket was slowing me. And there I saw the GitHub page, there are a couple of issues about this and uh, the developer was like, uh, well, if it doesn't work on that specific scenario, then we should probably fix the specific scenario instead of disabling it altogether. And there I understand that I disagree. Please allow me to just turn it off, like, uh, please. <laughs> Otherwise, beautiful app. Like I don't want uh, the negative sides to be um, more exposed than they should. Gnome is, I, I really like Gnome. And uh, even like Gedit, I know I talked bad about it, but it's a good app in itself. And I think it's just that the counterpart, Kile, Dolphin, and also Kate are really good. So it's a very high level of competition. And I think in these three areas, the KDE part is uh, significantly stronger. On the shell itself, I don't get the same uh, impression. I think that GNOME, the actual shell, is very strong, a very strong product. So I now transfer the question in everybody's mind. Am I going back to KDE? Not yet, not yet, but I actually want to try out elementary before going back to KDE. I will soon have to leave my GNOME desktop sadly, but I will switch to elementary. And uh, I actually bought a new computer uh, to review with elementary out of the box on it. And I want to try it out. I've actually bought it more than one month ago and Starlab, if you're listening to me, can you please give me some shipping updates because I've received none and it's been a month. I think I'm gonna send them an email. But hopefully I will soon receive it and I will tell you my opinions on elementary OS instead. And then hopefully in two, three months, KDE Plasma is going to have gestures and I can happily <laughs> switch back and be a normal KDE developer on KDE Plasma. I still do KDE developing on the KDE Plasma session, but just for developing. Anyway, that was everything. If you're interested in seeing me, you know, talk about Again, I want to say that, you know, GNOME is good. Don't get the wrong impression. I know I said a lot of bad things, but that's only the things I didn't like. There's also a lot of things that I do like and that just integ integrate so nicely in my daily workflow that I don't even notice them. So if you want me to do other videos about other things, well, you can subscribe, of course, but you can also give me some bucks inside of like Patreon, PayPal, those sort of stuff, even LibraPay if you're a open source fan, I don't know. <laughs> and um, that actually helps for, you know, maybe in the future buying other uh, things to review, laptops. I want to put my hands on a Steam Deck so bad, but I don't have the money right now. So feel free to donate a bit and uh, see you tomorrow.